Good morning, Cloud community, and welcome back to fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada, where we are at AWS reInvent. It is day four here on theCUBE. I'm Savannah Peterson with Lisa Martin. You are looking fantastic. Day four, Wait, we've you. done 45 interviews. How are you feeling? Oh, great. <laughs> I can't believe it's day four. The Cube will be producing over 100 interviews. Impressive, right? On this stage where there are two sets, and of course we have the set upstairs as well, it's amazing how much content we've created, how many great conversations we've had, right? and the excitement around AWS and the, and the community. Yeah, I feel like we've learned so much together. Love co-hosting with you, and so excited for our <clears throat> first conversation this morning with Wipro. Welcome, Tim and Kashmira. Welcome to the Thank show. You. How you doing? You both great. look great for day four. Thank you. Yeah, we're doing good. Great we're to doing see good. You. Ready to go. Day four. Let's go. <laughs> That's the spirit. That's exactly <laughs> the energy we need here on the cube. So, just in case someone in the audience is not familiar, Kashmira, tell us about Wipro. So, Wipro is a global consulting company, and we help our, transform our customers and their businesses. Transformation has been a super yeah. hot topic here at the show. Quite frankly, a big priority, especially with cost cutting and everything else that's going on. How how do you do that? How do you help customers do that, so, Kashmira? So we, we, so we have our, a, a strategy which we call our full stride cloud strategy. So particularly from a cloud perspective, here obviously with AWS, we have end-to-end -end client services. So from high-end strategic consulting, through customer journeys, um, in technology implementation, all the way through to our managed services. So we help customers with the end-to-end -end journey, particularly as here we're talking about cl cloud, but also business transformation as well. Um, and we have you know, a whole host of technologies. So about a few years ago we made an announcement around a, a billion investment in cloud. Casual. And that, yeah, absolutely. A cool billion. Uh, just a cool billion. Yeah, and nice that, pocket change. Yeah, yeah exactly. nice yeah. round number, right? <laughs> exactly. And that investment, over the last few years, we've acquired a number of really exciting companies, um, like Capco, which is a consulting company in the financial services space. We've acquired design companies, a company called Design It, looking at customer journeys and user experience. And then also technology companies um, called Rising, which looks after the whole SAP space. So we've kind of got the end-to-end -end solutions and technology. And then we also invest in what we call Wipro Ventures. These are really innovative, exciting startups. We invest in those companies to really drive transformation. And the final thing that really brings the whole thing together is that we have decades of experience in engineering. That's kind of the heart of where we come from. So that experience, all of that together, really helps our clients to transform their business, um, and particularly as we're talking about cloud, yeah. helps us to transform the cloud. Now what we're really hoping is that we can help our clients become what we call intelligent enterprises, and we're focusing more and more on customer outcomes, and really helping them with those business outcomes. Yeah, it doesn't matter what we do if there isn't that business outcome. Yeah, right. that's what it's all about. I'm curious, yeah. Tim, to get your, as the America's cloud leader, one of the things that, that our boss, John Ferrier, who is the co-CEO of theCUBE, was able to do, he, every year he gets to sit down with the head of AWS for a preview of reInvent. Right. He's been doing this for 10 years now, and one of the things that Adam Slitsky said to him, this is only about a week or so ago, is CIOs and CEOs are not coming to me to talk about technology. They want to talk about transformation, sure. yeah. business sure. transformation, not an amorphous topic of digital transformation. Are you hearing the same? Absolutely, right, so I think this is my seventh uh, reInvent, right? And I think six, seven years ago, the majority of the conversations you would have had are about technology, right? Um, great technology, but kind of technology for IT to solve IT problems. You know, how do, I, how do I migrate, how do I modernize, how do I use data, how do I make all this stuff happen, right? Now, it's about how do I drive new business opportunities, new revenue streams, uh, how do I drive more efficiencies through the manufacturing 2.0 or what have you, right? Yeah. One really good example, like take, uh, take medical devices, right? So like a connected defibrillator, right? Anytime you're building a, what they call an IOT device or a connected device, right? You have four competing. An edge device. An edge case. device, yeah. right? You have four competing elements, right? You've got form factor, power, connectivity, and intelligence. And all those things compete, right? I can have all the power if I want, if I can have something as big huge. as a table, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I can have satellite if, I, you know, if I can plug it in somewhere. But when you're talking about an implanted defibrillator, right, that, that all competes. So you have an engineering problem, an engineering challenge that's based on a device, right? And then it's got to connect to the cloud, right? So you have a lot of AWS services, IoT core, device shadowing, all sorts of things. That individual patient then, so, so there's the engineering challenge of, okay, I want to build a device, I got to prototype it, I got to design it, I got to build it at scale, I have to support it. 
Uh, then you have a patient, right, which is the end goal of the yeah. business is the patient care. They have a console at home that connects to that defibrillator via Bluetooth, let's say. And that's where you get your device updates, just like your laptop, right? Yeah, you know, now, pushing now, firmware now, updates now, to your chest. Yes, OTA, you know, it's like, yeah. okay, I'm just going to do this every Thursday, right? So now you very quickly move to a patient experience. And that patient experience will vary greatly, right? You know, based on age and exposure to technology and all other sorts of things. How diligent they are, do they do the update every week, right? To their primary care provider. And then what we're, we're also hearing, okay, so, like Kashmira mentioned, we, we, can, we can have that design discussion, right? We can, yeah. have, we can have the engineering device discussion with our device, device lab, then we can have our, you know, what's the, what's the patient experience? But then broader, what's the patient experience as they move, as we all do, through a healthcare, that's a healthcare network, it's a provider network, it's a series of hospitals and providers. So what does that big picture and ecosystem look like? And it's, you haven't heard me mention server or data center or any right. of that stuff, no. right? This is yeah. the most human anecdote we've had this, on yeah. the this show this fantastic. week, this sidebar. Okay, okay well, I mean, it's, keep going, and it's, it's wonderful. And, it's, and it's, it's fascinating because none of this happens or is possible without cloud. And, yeah. and the type of services that AWS is, is releasing out into their into their into their uh, into the world, right? But it very quickly moves from technology to human. It very quickly moves from individual to ecosystem to uh, to to partner and culture and you know society, right? So, so these are the types of conversations we're having. Um, I mean, and this is the kind of stuff that gets me out of bed in the morning. So it's great, right? It's great Clearly, that it's great passion. that we've moved uh, we moved into that space. Well, it's, I mean, the, the human element is so important. Every, every company has to be a data company. He hospitals, Absolutely. grocery yeah. stores, retailers, you name it. And what we're seeing is this, and we talk about data democratization all the time, but another thing that Adam Slivsky told John Furrier is that the role of, of data analysts is going to, it's going to change, maybe go away, mm -hmm. or, the, or the term, because data needs to be everywhere. The doctors need the data. Absolutely. Every, person in the organization needs to be able to analyze data to deliver outcomes. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And it's a fundamental part of our strategy. So when we're looking at, you know, data is everywhere. You need to really think about how do you align to it. But we're looking at it from an industry perspective. So when we're looking at solutions for our clients, we're looking at how do we deliver data solutions for our bank? How do we deliver data solutions in healthcare? Yeah. How do we deliver data solutions in various different so industries? So many different verticals that you're touching. Yeah, all the different verticals. So that's, you know, we have like a four point strategy. Um, industry is the first one. So we have been really worked with a lot of clients around migrations and modernizations, what we're moving to now is really this industry play. So this week, we've spent a lot of time with our energy and utilities um, clients and the AWS practice, and banking and financial services, which is a very significant part of our business. Also, cloud automotive. This is a really, really, you know, the software defined space, vehicle. Right? This is so exciting, it's but the cool. fundamental yeah. part of that is data, right. right? It's all hits on data. So it was really great to hear some of the announcements this week around the data Huge piece, because for me, that's really exciting. Yeah. A couple of other things that when we're thinking about our overall focus and strategy um, is, you know, looking at business transformation is, as you mentioned, is the ecosystem. So how do we bring all this together? And it's really, we see ourselves as an ecosystem orchestrator. And we're really here to look at leveraging our relationship with the best partners. We've actually met 17 partners here this week and had client sessions with them. And that's, you know, we're working with the likes of Snowflake and Daybreak in the, in the data space, our long-term partners like SAP, IBM, VMware, and, you know, and new partners like Kong. And we're looking at how do we bring the best of this ecosystem orchestration so that to su support those client business sure. outcomes. Sure. And then one final sort of pillar, sorry, um, is talent, right? So yeah. the biggest thing that everyone is thinking about and we all think about every single day is talent. So we've done two really exciting things this year. One has been around our own talent. So we've really looked at our own internal influencers, people who are speaking to our clients every single day, not so much the technology people, but the client people speaking to the client, and we've really raised the level of cloud fluency with these people, so that they can really start to have that discussion, you know, and our clients, you know, they know this technology um, way better than us do most of the time. Um, and then secondly, we actually announced um, uh, last week um, a, a new um, initiative, which we're calling Skills Guild, which is very well known to our AWS clients, because AWS provide this Skills Guild concept to their clients, but we are the first partner to do the skills guild, yeah, yeah. Um, from a partnering perspective, and this is really going to transform. So it's not just about training and enablement; it's actually about creating a journey for you to, you know, do your best work. 
Tim, what, how do you define cloud fluency? We were actually talking about it yesterday. Sure, sure. And, yeah. and really kind of bringing that across an organization, but what, what does it take for an individual who may not be a technologist to become cloud fluent? Sure, well, there's a couple, there's a couple angles to that, right? One is, one is, how do you create cloud fluency for people who might already be technical, right? And that's, and that's you know, I've spent over a decade with you know, boutique disruptive consulting companies who live and die by whether they can attract and retain talent. And there's sort of four elements to that. It's, can you, can you show people they're going to work on interesting stuff, right? Are they going to be excited about what they do? Can you show that they're going to uh, expand their skill sets? Yep. Can you show them a career path? And you can, can you surround all of that with a supportive engineering first culture, right? Mm -hmm. That you know, rewards for outcomes, but also cr creates this sort of community, right? Yeah. Um, that's, that's one thing that sort of, you know, that, that will be a natural entropy. People will be attracted to that. Um, on the other side of it, as you create fluency, you kind of do it with the conversation that I just had like around something like medical devices or something like the cloud car. When you just say, look, you start with something everybody already knows, right? We all know what patient care is like. We all know what autonomous vehicles is kind of like, right? And you work backwards from that and say, now here's, here's how all the pieces stitched together to create this end outcome for, for us and for our customers. Speaking my language, Tim, so I run a boutique consultancy. My talent, I go. live and die on that, yeah. quite frankly. It's and, everything, right? And and it's wow. so it's so important. I mean, in, in eliminating that churn at scale. How big is your team? Now I'm just thinking about this, because I'm sure your your talent retention has to be a challenge as well. Sure. So, so we have twenty five thousand um, uh, professionals on AWS on trained on you know uh, te cloud technologies globally. Um, Impressive. And, yeah, and then we have um, in terms of our uh, go to market team we've got 50 strong as well. So we're, you know, these are people who are, live and breathe AWS right. and speaking and working with the cloud. Let's um, hang out there a little bit. Tell us a little bit more about the partnership with AWS. Kashmir, let's go with you. Yeah, so our partnership is, you know, it's 11 years strong. It's been an, an, a really, really great That's partnership. That's a long it, it time is a long, in, in the AWS world, land. Right? That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that is. is right? it really no, that is. Is, you're, you're, you're like day oners there. That's, yeah, yeah real legacy. It really That's is. Awesome. And you know, this year, excitingly, we actually won the APJ Partner of GSI Partner of the Year. Congratulations! Award. Casual. Yeah, you, just like we buried the lead there. Congratulations. Congratulations! Yeah, so that really is testament to how we're really knuckling down and working proactively to, to really support our clients. Um, and you know, the, the, the partnership is a really really strong partnership. It's been there for many years. With, you know, great solutions and engagement. And many of the things I talked about in terms yeah. of our industry plays that we're driving, we've got a whole new set of competencies that we've launched, like a new energy competency this year, so we're focusing on industry. And then also security, two new uh, security competencies. And you know what's really exciting on the security side, you saw the announcements around the security data lake. Well, we've been working over the last few months with Gary Meshel and his team, and actually are one of the first partners that are driving that initiative. So we're really proud to be part of that. Um, so yeah, uh, you know, and then there's the client uh, engagement as well. So we have a dedicated team at AWS that works with our dedicated team. Um, so we're supporting the client's needs day to day. Are you as customer obsessed as AWS is? Absolutely. Yeah. I Absolutely. figured so. Everything's about the customer. Nothing happens right. without that. Well, you talked about outcomes. It's all about yeah. outcomes. Well, yeah. and I mean, quite literally going for the heart with the defibrillator uh, uh, <laughs> analogy. No, I mean, exactly. you can tell the customer's at the heart of what at you're doing. At the heart doing. of everything. Can't resist a good pun there. <laughs> So as I warned you, we have a little challenge for you here on theCUBE. We're looking for your hot take, your 30 second sound bite, thought leadership. What's the biggest takeaway from the event and moving forward looking into 2023? Tim, you're giving me that eye contact, I'm going to you first. Right. Okay, sure, love to. Um, so I don't know how hot a take it is, but <laughs> I kind of see this transition as cloud as the operating system, right? So, so let's take the the, what we call the cloud car project. We have the connected car. You know, a car is a durable good. And we all know, there's been a lot of talk about the electric cars or the autonomous vehicles being like more of a computer than a vehicle, right? But a vehicle's supposed to last 10, 15, 20 years. Our laptops don't last 10, 15, 20 years. Yeah. So there's this, there's this, there's this yeah. major challenge to say, how can, I, how can I change the way the technology operates within the vehicle? So you see this transition to where Instead of it being a car that, that has a computer, then it, the, the, the latest transition is to more of a computer that, that operates like a car. This new vehicle that's going to emerge is going to be much like a cell phone, right? Where it, it traverses the world, and depending on where it is, different things might be available, right? And, 
and how and how um, how the actual technology, the software that the, is running, will will be you know sort of amorphous and move between different resources in the network, on the car, everywhere else. And so that's a really different way of thinking about. If, if we think about how quickly the, know, the, the Overton window, like what becomes normal, it, yeah, it yeah, changes yeah. over time. We're really getting to like a very fast movement of that into something like this vehicle is just going to be something that we don't even maybe think of as a car anymore. Just the way that an iPhone isn't what we used to think of a phone as. Our pocket right? computer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What's going to be yeah. your car? Oh, great. That's great. kind yeah. of my take. Awesome. Away. All right, Kashmira. All right. Yeah, and I mean, I, if I was to just you know summarize it quite simply, for me, it's really focusing on industry solutions, delivering client outcomes, fundamentally underpinned by data, security, and sustainability. Yeah. You know, I think. Nailed it. Yeah. Knocked yeah. it out of the park. Perfect little sound bite. That Boom. was fantastic. You both were a wonderful start to the day. Thank, Thank you so you. much for being here, Tim and Kashmira. Absolute pleasure. It, this, is, this is a joy. We're going to keep learning here on theCUBE and thank all of you for tuning in to our fabulous AWS reInvent coverage here from Sin City with Lisa Martin. I'm Savannah Peterson and you are watching theCUBE, the leader in high-tech coverage. Thank you.